L says, over time, I've come to believe that the commonalities of all religions are what resonate, and I believe it represents God's plan to us all, Christians, Jews, Muslim, etc. So on that note, on that note, let's talk about the Tower of Babel, because it's th these two things are related, and it fits in perfectly with what L just said here. It fits in perfectly with what L just said here. So we're going to talk about the Tower of Babel now. The Tower of Babel is a story that's found in the 11th chapter of Genesis. You blink and you'll miss it kind of story, but many of us know it. Bottom line, the, the cliff notes is the people of the world came together and they began building a city. And they were all of one voice. They all understood each other. They, 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 they were of one mind. And they thought, hey, let's build this beautiful city and let's build a tower so tall that it, that it reaches up into heaven. And then the Bible says, again, the story is uh, Genesis chapter 11, 1 through 9. Verse 5, though, says, But God came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. And the Lord said, it's, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand one another not understand each other. So the premise is God comes, sees this tower, sees the tower as a threat. Nothing will, if these people can do this, nothing will be impossible for them. They'll be out of my control. They'll be out of our control. So we're going to confuse their language. And by confusing their language, the Bible says the people scattered and the city crumbled. Tower crumbled. The people scattered. They never, you know, it, I think it probably... It's a myth story, obviously. It's, it's one of the myth stories of Genesis, maybe describing why there's different languages in the world, maybe describing why, why there are conflicts and wars and why there's things like tribalism and, and why we can't really seem to, 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 to speak with one another. All of these would, are, are, lovely, are lovely things to, to think on. The other day I was thinking about the story. And I was thinking in particular of, of the number of people who come here who are of different faiths or of no faith, uh, different traditions or of, of no tradition, whatever it may be. And I, I, be, I was thinking about some of the people that I've met, not only from Church Without Walls, but here in Halifax and, and, the, and the number of different people. You know, then I bumped into this article uh, about this festival in Surrey. And I thought, what if, what if we've substituted the word um, theology or faith with language that when God came and God saw, saw all these people speaking the same language it wasn't about the language it was about their understanding of God that together they were growing increasingly close to God closer and closer and closer to God so close to God that they would have become God they, they would have had the same powers of God. What if, what if our lives aren't about wielding godly power, but the search for God? What if that ultimately is what gives us meaning? What if that ultimately is, is what gives us purpose, is that we are supposed to be always on the quest for the divine? That we're always supposed to be asking questions. We're always supposed to be looking for answers. We're always supposed to be knocking on doors. And that if we had that divine knowledge, we'd lose our purpose. And we'd lose ourselves by losing that purpose. And so God scattered not just our language, but God scattered our theological understandings. We were no longer of one faith, but of many faiths. We were no longer of one belief system, but of many belief systems. We no longer had one understanding of God, but it was 4,200 understandings of God and counting. That God did this not because, and you know, maybe you could say because God felt threatened, but maybe, but what if God did this because God wanted to ensure that we maintained our purpose, that we didn't lose our raison d'etre, 
that we didn't lose our our reason, our, our reason for being here. To me, it, 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 it explains, possibly, and again, I know it's a myth story, but a story like this might help me understand why there are so many different religions, why there are so many different faiths, and yet amongst all of these religions and faiths and philosophies and understandings and, and, and ways of living are those, again, those core tenets love everything else everything else is commentary right all everything of of my faith can be summed up in love everything else is commentary how many other religions can say that i I don't want to say it for other religions because it's not my place but how many others can say that? that we are all called to love and everything else is just sort of an offshoot of that everything else is just sort of a an extra. I'm sure somebody out there will say, I read a book, and that's exactly what the author said in this book about the story of the Tower of Babel. I can't be the only one that's ever thought of it. But it was, it's just a curiosity story for me. You know, we don't always want to talk about politics, and we don't always want to talk about, um, well, other stuff like that. Uh, or other people who are involved in that stuff. So this was just a curiosity piece for me. What if? What if God separating those people, it wasn't about language, but it was about understanding. It was about knowledge of God. It's just a thought. Amen.